So we need to determine determine the domain of uh, vector r of t with the component 1 plus t to the fourth, natural log of 7 minus t, and the square root of 5 over t. So um, the way to do it, let's, let's examine the domain of uh, each fun each component. So we start with uh, the domain of the first one, uh, which is the first component, 1 plus t to the fourth. Well, if you look at, uh, a, this is a continuous function, 1 plus t to the fourth, it continues over the whole real numbers, so the domain will be the set of all real numbers, like so, okay? Uh, and then we look at the second component, the domain of the natural log of 7 minus t. What are the restrictions here? It, it cannot be, how about, can it equal 7? No, natural log of 0 does not exist. So we cannot say cannot be greater than 7, because that implies that we are okay with t equals 7. So rephrase. t less than 7, exactly. Not equal. And the last one, that's probably easier, uh, domain of square root of 5t. What are the restrictions here? Can we include? Of course we can. So putting this together, what will be the conclusion? What will be the domain of R of the vector? 0 to 7 is correct. But uh, and what about the 0? Are we going to include it? Right, like so, or we can write it as 0 to 7. So we need to satisfy the domain requirement of each component. That's, that's actually what I wanted you to get from this exa exercise, okay? So this will be the, the answer. All right, let's, let's now move on to the next example. In this example, we need to find the limit of R of T as T approaches zero. So, uh, Juan showed us on, uh, before, on last class before the test that um, the limit of, uh, of a vector is the the limit of a vector is a vector whose components are the limit of each component. In other words, if a vector R is made of F comma G comma H, then limit of R would be limit of F limit comma limit of G limit of H. So let's write it. Um, the limit of R of T as T approaches A equals uh, the limit of each component. Like so. So this is a theorem, a limit theorem that uh, or definition the limit, the definition of a vector, uh, the limit of a vector function. In this case, we need to look at each component in turn. So, <clears throat> in our case, it will be the limit. Let's write it again. The limit as t goes to zero of R of t. Then it will be the limit as t approaches zero of uh, one plus uh, t squared. 
then the limit as t approaches zero of t e to the negative three t, and finally so <coughs> the limit is is a also a vector whose each component's component is is a each of its component of its component is a limit as well. So now let's evaluate one component at a time. The limit, the first one, the limit is t approaches zero of one plus t squared. Well, one plus t squared is a continuous function. We have no hole or, or vertical asymptote, so we simply can uh, substitute, and it's one. Let's look at the next one. Well, if you think about it, uh, you can write it as the limit as t approaches zero of t divided by e to the three t. Now, e to the three t is can never equal zero, right? There is no value of t that would make it equal zero. Uh, matter of fact, this is always positive. So this is another continuous function we can do as a direct substitution. So, uh, so the the result will be zero. So we have one and we have zero, and the last one. Just to brush off on some stuff, uh, we know that the limit of sine of x over x is, is 1. But in case you forgot, uh, remember what we do. This is a, a 0 over 0 situation. So we invoke L'Hopital rule, and we take the limit as t goes to 0, take the derivative. So it's cosine t over 1. Now we can do direct substitution. So it's cosine of zero or one, okay? And so we have component one, zero, one, and that will be the limit of the vector. This t goes to zero, so, and we'll do it on the next page. Or we can write it as I plus K.